for many of us, both young and old, the start of this theme tune meant an hour and a bit of nothing but pure entertainment and motoring bliss. But once a year, from 2012 until 2014, in the city of Durban, the Moses Mabida Stadium and the surrounding streets erupted with the evocative sounds of Formula 1 cars, V12s, V8s, and that meant only one thing, the Top Gear Festival. For me, this was the absolute highlight of the year because I got to see the three people I admired most in action, surrounded by the best cars in the world. Now, considering that the videos I made of the festival are by far the most popular, I thought I would revisit what made it so great. And who better to revisit these memories with than someone who was actually part of presenting the festival itself, Mr. Sasha Martinengo. Right, so on the, on the line, kind of, on the Zoom interview, we've got none other than the legend himself, Mr. Sasha Martinengo. Sasha, how are you this afternoon? I'm terrific, Barry. Um, been doing some DIY and uh, <laughs> yeah, I suppose trying to keep myself busy. Yeah. How are you, young man? <laughs> no, I, I really can't complain. Um, so I, I already gave you a little intro in the, in the little thing that, that you'll see when the video is uploaded. But I want to know from you, obviously it's been, it's been quite a while now since you were actually involved uh, with the Top Gear Festival. So how did it come that, that you know, the guys asked you to actually be involved with the Top Gear Festival? Yeah, geez, I must say it uh, brings back so many uh, fantastic memories. Um, basically, I got called, Barry, by a, um, a promoter, um, a, a guy who was uh, putting the event together um, by the name of Paul Edmonds, who tragically passed away, I think, three weeks ago. Oh, sure. um, Yeah, can you believe it? Young, on the golf course. Crazy. Um, and he gave me a call um, together with uh, uh, another gentleman by the name of Hilton Longley. And um, they phoned me and they said, listen, we're looking at doing the MPH um, in South Africa. And, you know, most of us always just know it as, as Top Gear or Top Gear Live. Yeah. But originally it was called MPH uh, Miles Per Hour. And that was the arena show in the UK. Um, where, where Jeremy, uh, Richard and James went out and did put on, put on their show. And they couldn't use the name Top Gear because there were rights involved with um, BBC. Oh. So they, they asked me and they said, listen, have you ever seen them? I said, yes, I saw the one in Birmingham last year. I saw it on YouTube. They said, oh, I said, yeah, no, it looks like terrific fun. Because I mean, I've, you know, I've watched Top Gear my whole life, you know, so it was yeah. quite cool. And they said, well, listen, we, we um, investigating bringing it through to South Africa. And we're looking for someone um, to be the South African um, MC or the South African person to be on stage with them. So, um, because at that stage, what they had informed me was that uh, Richard and Jeremy would be coming, um, but James wasn't keen to travel. So they wanted a South African uh, counterpart. Mm. And I suppose maybe with the, my history of motor racing and motorsport and super sport and Formula One and all of those kind of things, I was, you know, one of the candidates. Yeah. So they told me, you know, you, you, you're one of the candidates um, and would you be keen? So I said, yes, of course. And, and that from there, that's, that's how it started. Yeah. Awesome, man. Um, so basically, um, MPH, so it was originally for the MPH, but as you said, um, there were like rights involved. So that's why it sort of changed to Top Gear Festival later on. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so from, from there, uh, they, they must have had communication. I don't know who the other people were that were in, in contention for this. Hmm. Um, and they asked, asked me to send through my CV and some uh, uh, film footage, etc., which I did. And then they said, okay, well, listen, um, you know, you, you're in stage two of the interview. So uh, we're going to send you over to the UK. And they sent me over to the UK, basically an overnight, um, just a day, mm. you know, fly South Africa, go and have a meeting, fly back the same night. Um, and I was meant to meet up with Jeremy Clarkson, okay. um, but Jeremy couldn't make it. So I, I ended up meeting with, um, with Andy Wilman. So Andy Wilman is the producer, was the producer of Top Gear, is now the producer of, yeah. of Grand Tour. And he's actually a personal friend of Jeremy's. Yeah. Um, and apparently they were at school together, as far as I know. I don't, I, I don't know the whole story. So I'm, I met with Andy in a pub, 
um, in London and we had a little pub lunch and a couple of beers and we just sat and spoke and, uh, and, and he said, cool, great to meet you and we'll be in touch. And I, I flew home. I was very, very excited because I thought, you know, things, things were pretty good. And um, like about three days later, I got a phone call and said, listen, um, they like you and, and you're going to be the South African representative for Top Gear, awesome. MPH. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So That's crazy. I, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Amazing. it was just so, something so, so <laughs> special. Yeah. Um, so I believe the first MPH show was in 2008. Is that right? 2009, I, I think it was 2007 or 2008, okay. somewhere, somewhere around there. Okay. Yeah. So originally, so it was just going to be, it was just Johannesburg and it was at the Northgate Dome and there were 10 shows. Um, yeah, we did a Thursday night gala show. We did two on Friday, three on Saturday, three on Sunday. So three, six, eight, ten 10 shows. Yeah. So okay. we, you do 10 shows in three days. Plus, plus the gar, the, plus plus the gala evening on the Thursday night, which yeah. was a charity-driven evening, um, mainly invited guests and and media, and um, yeah, and it it's, it started rolling, Barry, and it, it it just it became really big. You know, yeah. it, it was their biggest audience that they'd ever played to because the Birmingham oh, wow. Arena, I think, was only was only like a two and a half thousand seater, and at uh, the Northgate Dome. Um, we had capacity of four and a half thousand people per event. And of course, you know, your nine, your, your 10 o'clock show on a, on a Friday morning is not going to have a full, full house. Yeah. But just about every single show that we did um, was, was full. And, and that also just blew their minds away. They couldn't believe the response um, from, from the South African public. Wow. It, was, it was very, very special. Yeah, so obviously that then moved along to, I know in 2011, they had a show at Kailami. And then what I want to focus on specifically is the three shows that they did in Durban from 2012 to 2014. Now, obviously, as a, a massive fan of uh, Jeremy, James and Richard, and, you know, someone who really wants to meet them, what's it actually like working with um, basically some of the biggest shows um, or b biggest presenters in the world? Yeah, uh, you know, initially you you are a little bit intimidated because you don't know what to expect. They arrive on basically a Thursday uh, Thursday mid morning, and your first shows. Are, I mean, Wednesday mid morning, and your first show is on Thursday evening. Um, and basically, I just get, got called and said, "Listen, um, please meet with Jeremy and Richard." At uh, so I'm talking specifically the first shows, yeah. and then we'll get on to Kyle Army and then Durban as well. Um, and we were staying. The, the, there's a couple of points that I, I want to make. I was phoned and said, "Listen, uh, pack your bags. You're going to be at uh, the Palazzo for the next uh, four nights, five nights, um, and uh, you're meeting. You're, you're having a meeting, a lunch meeting with Jeremy at one o'clock." in the afternoon this was the Wednesday before the first shows and I thought well geez I live like three k's away but they put me up in 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 a hotel mm. so the first point that I want to make I was treated exactly the same as them um, by everybody and they ha had as much respect for me as I had for them which just goes to show the professionality of of these people and that's why they are such massive superstars in, in their own right. Working with them is one of the greatest privileges I've ever, ever had. Um, the professionalism of, of uh, Jeremy Clarkson is extraordinary, very extraordinary. Um, you know, people always sit there and say, yes, but, you know, Richards does this and James does that. Everything they do on Top Gear or everything they did on Top Gear is Jeremy Clarkson. Jeremy Clarkson is the person who puts together the script, how it's going to run, when it's going to run, who's going to do what, who's going to say what. And uh, yeah, with the, when, when they're driving around and, and doing their shows all over the world, that's not scripted. But for the rest of it, as a show, it's scripted. And that was quite incredible to, to work with and learn. I've never worked on scripts. And yet here it was, it was a script. And you do not deviate from the script. Yeah. If, if, if you think you can say something funnier or in, in some kind of way, it doesn't matter. 
it, Jeremy writes it down and he says, here we go. And when you rehearse it and you try and change it, he'll stop. And he'll say, Sasha, stick to the script. Mm. He'll say, James, stick, uh, Richard, stick to the script. That's what you do. So the professionalism of, of working with them was, uh, was just something I treasure so much because it, it's, it helped me so much when, when dealing with, with other things and getting myself prepared for events um, uh, that, I, that I do and, and try and do. The professionalism was uh, out of this world. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> let's talk. Yeah, let's talk Kyle Army and, and, and Durban specifically. So we, we eventually we went NPH, and I think the following year it became Top Gear Live. And um, Top Gear Live, uh, we then expanded and took it to uh, Johannesburg and Cape Town. Okay. And Cape Town was, Cape Town was really good fun because we went to Grand <laughs> West and that, that was the season where we used a jet bike. And uh, Jer Jeremy, I think, blew up about 11 jets. But eventually, it was a South African. It was a South African technician guy who actually got the jet working properly. Yeah. Um, besides the foolery of Clarkson always pushing the wrong button, and Clarkson actually took that same guy with him on the Australian leg because he wow. didn't trust anybody else with the jet, so he took him with him. <laughs> I, 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 before before I tell you about Kyle Army, I just want to tell you one or two little stories. Yeah. One of the stories, and I, I won't mention the the manufacturer. Um, but in one of the first, uh, I think it was the, the first year, maybe even the first year. Yeah. Um, we had this blow up car that, um, a plastic car, um, you know, like, a like a pool, uh, thing, you know, and this floated around the say, um, around the arena and then it came down and then the, the real, part of this car drove out you know yeah. part of the, the, the stunt etc and the manufacturer of of that specific car uh, wasn't prepared to loan um the guys or the team a car um so there was a bit of a pickle and in typical clarkson fashion he just called the uh, event people together and he just sat and said um we'll go and buy one that's it yep. <laughs> and they went and bought one and that's it. So that's how that's how things that's how things work. You know, when you've got these huge budgets, you can do these things. Not that the budget was endless, but when you do things, you do them properly. And and yeah. Clarkson does them properly. Uh, no, well, why don't we change the car? No, I want that car. Find one and buy it. End of story. Gosh. So anyway, so 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 Top Top Gear was um, Top Gear Live. Then it progressed, and then Jeremy Clarkson. Because, number one, he loves South Africa very, very much. And number two, it's relatively cheap for them to come out yeah. here, let's be honest. <laughs> and um, he decided he wanted to put on an event which could not rival, but be comparative to the Goodwood Festival of speed. Yeah. And Kyle Army was the ideal place, even though it was in the process of... of of, of uh, you know serious maladministration at that stage, it was still the the ideal venue, and um, I, you know a lot of people who came through that weekend were we were unfortunately treated to the most miserable weather, um, and it was raining and it was cold and it was really really difficult. Um, had we had normal South African weather, I think it would have I think that would have lasted a, a lot longer. But because of the, the weather. And us South Africans so spoiled with the weather, when it becomes cold and miserable, we don't go out. Why should we? Yeah. Because tomorrow we know it's going to be better. Mm. We, you know, we're very spoiled. <laughs> but, but what people don't understand is over that weekend, um, and I'm just trying to remember names, we had Derek Bell, we had Sterling Moss, we had Eddie Jordan, we had David Coulthard. Um, we had... Eddie Schechter was there as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Jody, Jody, Jody Schechter was there. We had uh, Gordon Murray. We had Mr. Johan Rupert, um, plus all of his cars. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the lineup of people that we had over that weekend was out of this world. And don't yeah. forget, now there was, there was all, all three of us, uh, all three of them. So it was James, Richard, Jeremy, and then it was myself and Tiff Nadell who were doing uh, a whole lot of the other yeah. antics because, you know, I mean, the three of them, it's pointless having a fourth because, you know, but I was used in, in, in lots of other capacities. And, you know, um, 
the Friendship Motor Museum and, and Johan Rupert brought up a ton of their cars, you know, from yeah. 288 GTOs, 599 GTOs to classic um, Aston Martins. The, the cars on are, are on display were unbelievable. Jody had his March, he had his Wolf, he had his Ferrari there. He went and did laps. D David Coulthard did laps in, in the um, in the Red Bull. It was the most magnificent event. Unfortunately, just by the the weather. Mm. Um, and had I promise you, had the the weather been kinder to us. Um, I, I believe um, from an eventing point of view, an organization point of view, that um, Top Gear Festival would still be going. Um, wow. And that, that's the honest truth. Yeah. That was also the first time I did the bungee jump in, uh, <laughs> out of, in a car. <laughs> we'll get to Which, that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk Durban. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so the following year after Kyle Army, they definitely loved the festival idea of, of incorporating um, cars going around as opposed to just the arena show. And they decided to move to Durban and then use Moses Mabida as a stadium. Yeah. I went, geez, you're not going to get 60,000 people in there. But they've <laughs> cut the stadium off, of course, uh, completely. And, um, and then they used a lot of the roads around Moses Mabida as a, as a circuit. Mm. And um, had some racing and drifters and also these cars. We had Mercedes-Benz. Uh, Sam Bird was there in the AMG Patronus um, car. We had uh, Antonio Felix da Costa in the Red Bull racing car. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, our, our, our big guest that year, um, also, Jody was also there. And our big guest um, that year, uh, of course, was Mika Hakkinen. Yeah. And... Um, uh, I went racing. Um, what are those? Those little they call them tuck -tucks. bees. <laughs> tuck tucks. There we go. We went racing. We went racing around the streets of Durban <laughs> with Mika Hakkinen, and and I mean it's just it's surreal because you you yeah. um, you know you land you, you land up uh, you know and as I said earlier you you treat it exactly the same. So you know once you've finished your shows for the day. Um, you'll just get a message, Sasha, dinner, 7.30, cars will be outside, blah, 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 blah. And it's basically the three of them, myself, you know, the event organizers, one or two of their guests or whatever, and you all go out for dinner together. You know, you're not left to your own devices. Yeah. You're part of their team and they include you in it. And those were three brilliant years in Durban. The crowds came out and, you know, Durban sometimes, Barry, and you're a, you're a KZN man. Yeah. You know, the Durban crowds can sometimes, <laughs> can sometimes be a little bit slow in the uptake, but man, <laughs> did they embrace it and they loved it and we loved it. And we had so much fun uh, there. Um, and the, st the stadium shows were also terrific, uh, the, way, the way they changed it. And I had the privilege, yeah. you know, it was the first year that, that I could actually finish my stuff on track and then actually go into the stadium and actually watch the show. So it was actually yeah. quite a lot of fun. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, the Top Gear Festival was the first time I actually got to experience F1 because obviously I was based in KZN and I couldn't make it up to the Top Gear Festival in Joburg. So to actually experience the Formula One Cup for the first time, it's, literally, it's really nothing I'll, I'll ever, ever forget. It was just <laughs> that whole weekend. I mean, it was the, the highlight of my year just to, because um, previous, or oh, well, a day or two beforehand, there was a supercar club um, that we came down from Joburg and did a tour down to Correct. Uh, Durban. And I mean, um, through the Midlands where I used to live, I mean, you just have all the Ferraris and the Porsches just reverberating around there. And I mean, it was sort of like the build up to the actual event. It was just, it was, like I said, something I'll never, ever forget. Um, but going back to um, the, three, uh, the three presenters, I know obviously, and what you said uh, beforehand, Jeremy has got, you know, he's got a reputation. Not everybody um, sort of understands the way he does things and, um, arguably takes things too far but in like just having dinner with him is he is he a lot or are all three of them a lot different than what they are on tv or are they a lot more chill than what they portray um yeah it's it's quite an interesting dynamic because when they are together they uh jeremy will always try and get a little upper hand on james <laughs> or on, on on richard but i think that's mainly because there are others around but when you just sit and have a cup of coffee or a lunch with them individually, they are three wonderful, wonderful men, all incredibly humble, very grateful for what they, they've achieved and, and, and how successful they, they've become. 
um, and are incredibly passionate about what they do and all professional in their own ways. Um, and so, somehow Jeremy manages to manage all of the egos um, very, very well. Because, you know, when you're working with, with people, um, you know, and everyone's on the same kind of stature, it becomes, can become very, very dramatic. But as individual people, they, they are just three of the, the nicest, and I hate that word, but I'm going to use it, three of the nicest men that I've met, met in my, in my uh, life. And, you, you know, I chat to, the only one I don't chat to too regularly is James because I lost his number. But I mean, I chat okay. to Richard and I chat to, oh, to, um, <laughs> to, to Jeremy, you know, at least twice a month, you know, we'll send each other WhatsApp and just how's it going. And, yeah. uh, their, in, and their invitation is always um, open. You know, they always say, Sasha, when you come over, please come and, come and visit. And um, I think the second last time that I was in the UK, I was actually over to watch the Silverstone Grand Prix 2011 when, um, I think it was 2011, when Alonso won. Yeah. And um, I, I, I went over there and I told Jeremy, listen, I'm, I'm coming over to England. This is where I am. And he said to me, well, listen, let's, let's meet for a glass of wine at this pub. And um, it was in Nottingham. Uh, yeah, Nottingham. And I was in Reading and I had to catch a bus and then a taxi and a tram and a this and that and whatever. Yeah. And Barry, this is when you start understanding what the paparazzi are. Um, because I managed to get to the restaurant a couple of minutes earlier because I, you know, I didn't know what times were going to yeah. be like. And, uh, yet it was incredibly efficient to, uh, around England. <laughs> um, and I always sit there and, and having a beer, waiting for Jeremy. And then I saw him start walking um, from, from a little bit of a distance because we're where I was sitting, I could see out in the street. And um, uh, there were just a, a gaggle of, of photographers around, you know, on the other sides of the street, just taking photographs of him, you yeah. know, and, and people always trying to find out, well, what's Clarkson up to now? Who's he meeting? What's it, what's it all about? I thought I was going to get, you know, my, my photo in the <laughs> news of the world or something, but uh, that never happened. And then news of the world collapsed, I think, in the weekend I was there. So yeah. <laughs> it was quite <laughs> ironic. <laughs> yeah, well, I know. Actually, yeah, it's just, I mean, obviously, I've, I'll admit, I haven't watched Top Gear from the beginning, beginning, only from about when I was about 11 did I actually really get into Top Gear. But I mean, just to, mm. to be able to see what they do in action in person is just something that's absolutely phenomenal and something that I'm sure that you'll also never forget. Um, but obviously, you were involved with the street circuit mainly in Durban. And Many, many exciting things, many exciting cars, you know, Formula One cars, young and old, the newest supercars of the time. What do you think stood out the most? What's your most vivid memory of when you were presenting the, the street circuit show? Um, I, I think, you know, the fact of, of having Mika Hakkinen uh, standing next to you and having a chat with him and, uh, you know, th those are very, very special moments. I, I mean, I remember seeing Mika Hakkinen at Inspire in 1990. Nine, um, and and I saw him from a distance. I said, "Oh my word, that's Mika Hakkinen." Yeah. And and here I was, twelve years later, you know, standing next to him, and, and we're having a chat, and later that <laughs> evening having a beer. So, those are quite extraordinary moments because I'm not an autograph hunter, and I'm not a a, a person who you know. Oh, I mean, I think I've only I don't even think I've got a photograph of myself, Jeremy, James, uh, and Richard. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I, I don't even have that. Uh, which is sad, but I, you know, it's just yeah. I'm not that kind of a person. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you have the opportunity to meet people like Mika Hakkinen and, and, and just shoot the breeze and, and just talk as two individuals, you know, I didn't sit there and start asking him, you know, what happened in 2001 at, at Monza when, you know, you mm -hmm. crashed and you were behind. I just sat there and said, you know, you're a guy, I'm a guy. Yeah, you're a two times world champion and <laughs> whatever. But but eventually, we're all humans. And, and if you can break through just, you know, a, a person's bravado or, or their, their image or maybe their insecurities, even. and the same, in, you know, speaking for myself as well, um, and you just start chatting to people, it's amazing what actually comes out. And I think those, those are the memories. On, on the, uh, from the, the racing point of view or the cars on, on the tracks, down in Durban. I, I think the Formula One cars uh, just are quite extraordinary. Um, but I think it was, I think there was a GTC race. It was one of the first GTC races ever um, that the guys raced on that very, very um, tight circuit. 
And just to watch the guys' um, precision driving was quite incredible. I remember there was one very big crash. Um, I can't remember who it was, but there was one big crash. And um, just just watching people's skill when it comes to to driving uh, cars at very fast speeds around yeah. a circuit where you've just got concrete on both sides is is a real treat. Whether it's in a Formula One car or or a, you know a, a Fiat Uno, yeah. you know Fiat Five Hundred. If they're still driving it at speed, it's going to give you the same throw. Yeah. Now, I think one of the things that uh, people might remember most from the, the stadium show is when you jumped into a car and were lifted about 240 <laughs> feet into the air and then and then let go. So tell us more about the how did, <laughs> how did the bungee jumping come about? <laughs> Yeah, well, th- and that stems back to the Kyle Army um, event the, the year previously, where one of the stunts is they wanted to go and, and let the, you know, this car was going to bungee. It was the first time it was ever going to be done. And, um, and Jeremy and uh, it was, uh, yeah, the three of them just, there's no way, I'm not going to do that. You put me out of your bloody mind. And I said, no, come on, I'll do it, man. It's not a problem. And they all went, What? And um, so we said, okay, let's do it. And um, the, 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 the health and safety and security um, and safety aspects, unbelievable. And I, and I must say there was a guy, uh, Steve, called him Sledge, and he was in charge of all of these kind of things. So there's nothing left to chance, Barry. It is so professional, I can't tell you. They will not leave anything to chance. Um, and they, we had this Australian crew who had rigged up this car. The car was completely stripped. So it had its wheels on, a steering wheel, which was just basically there, uh, which attached the wheels and uh, a seat. The rest of it was, was completely, so it was just a shell. So it wasn't that heavy. Um, and then they had my weight on top of it. And then I was on this huge platform in the car. So I was 240 feet up in the air looking over, um, just about over the, the stadium, looking at the beautiful um, Durban. Uh, I mean, it was spectacular to see. Um, and fortunately, I had known what was coming because in, in Kyle Army, when I did it for the first time, just as a test, I didn't know. Um, I thought when they pulled the pin, the car would just fall. But I didn't know the car was going to go forward and then drop. <laughs> okay, so I was like, What's going on? And <laughs> fell. And I did the first, the first jump in Kyle Army uh, the year prior. And, and, you know, I got down and I got out of the car and everyone's okay. And Jeremy, Richard and, and uh, James ran up to me and said, are you okay? I said, no, 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 I'm cool. And they just looked at me and shook their heads. I said, you are mad. <laughs> and then I did another 10 of those jumps in Kyle Army, <laughs> some of them in the pouring rain. Oh, no. um, I, I, re- I remember being 240 feet up in the air and, and the guys coming on and saying, guys, the radars are showing lightning. Sorry, bring him down, bring him down. So <laughs> we had some moments. But then getting to Durban, they thought, you know what? People haven't, hadn't seen it. They'd heard about it the year prior in Kyle Army and they hadn't, they hadn't seen it. So they, they said, well, listen, let's incorporate it into the show. And, um, and they said, listen, Sasha, come on. Are, are you prepared to do it? I said, of course I'm prepared to do it. Um, which, was, which was great for me as well because it, it, it also made me feel part of their arena show as well. Yeah. You know, so we had a little bit of banter and I was, it was right at the end of, you know, at the end of the sequences. So, you know, I'm dangling in the air and they walk off the stage. But um, yeah, they, they were fabulous memories. I mean, they just, you know, so much fun and also so much caring, you know, for, from the guys j- just to make sure that I was safe and I was okay after everyone. And mm. uh, it just shows you that, that as, as, as a, bastardly as like a Clarkson can come across to people or whatever. He's got a very soft heart and uh, he's a great human being as well. Oh man. Well, Sasha, I can only thank you so, so much. It was an absolute pleasure just like listening to your experiences, just to to hear what they're actually like to work with. And and I really, really do appreciate it. Ah, Barry, always a pleasure to chat to you, young man. Carry on doing what you're doing. I really support you a lot. And, uh, yeah, let's let's uh, get through this lockdown uh, peacefully and safely. So, uh, regards yeah. to you and your family, and um, yeah, please look after yourself. Thank you.